Well, I can't complain. No, I, I know, George, I know full well that I can't complain is the yuppie way of complaining. Because you can do anything that you want as as long as you say that you're not doing it while you're doing it. Hold on, I need to have some of this delicious tea. Mm. Oh, this is, um, what is this, George? I, I'm, pardon my French. It, it's that, that's, is that oolong... Oolong with uh, what? grapefruit. So what's, the, what's the white grape? Now, hold on. Let me try. I got to taste this again to see. No, George, you can't believe people when they tell you which grapefruit it is. They'll, they'll go get those white grapefruits and then they'll tell you that it's ruby red, expecting you to not know the difference. No, I'm pretty sure that's ruby red. No, no, I don't. No, no sugar. Why not? Fresh squeeze root. Ru- I guess you don't have to fresh squeeze it. I mean, it's we whatever ruby red grape juice or grapefruit juice. Excuse me. In the uh, in the oolong, where do you get oolong tea? Oh, that's a good question. You've you've not been watching jessieyoung dot com. Y o n g e, Jesse spelled correctly, of course. Y o n g e young. Yeah, you've not been over at jessieyoung dot com, George. If you were, you would know what oolong tea is. No, this isn't Jesse Young oolong. Jesse Young oolong is in America. I'm in Asia. I'm enjoying Asian tea. I would... Well, Jesse Young tea is Asian, but it's in... George, don't get me distracted. People don't want to listen to me talk about tea the whole time. What about... What about how I woke up this morning? How I... Well, I, uh... I... No, hold on a minute. I should probably explain to you, uh, before I get back to my conversation here with George through the class, if... Well, see, I woke up this morning feeling quite sick, and I called George right away. I said, George, I don't know if I can do the podcast today. He said, what? You're not going to do the podcast weekly? You can't skip the podcast weekly and have it still be weekly. I said, well, that's true. So I immediately got up. Okay, I got up right away and I smoked three healthy cigarettes and it went, what do you mean? I can't, I, you don't like me calling them healthy cigarettes? George, I woke up this morning and I was ready to throw up because I was sick. Four hours a night all weekend long will do that to you. Well, I've been working hard. Well, I will tell the the listeners what I've been working on if you'll stop interrupting me. I'll finish the story first. So, I no, I woke up and I had three healthy cigarettes and I wasn't sick anymore. I mean, nicotine cured Ebola. No, I'm not pretending to be any type of surgeon. I just call them healthy cigarettes because we call... Well, doctors called them healthy in the 60s. What what, what are, you know... I don't know if you call them healthy... uh, do they call them healthy by word? I don't know what they call. Everything's healthy this week and not healthy next week. Who? All you need to get is is a DeLorean with a flux capacitor, and you can find any point in history where anything will be called healthy or unhealthy. So I, I'm just. Who knows what its cigarettes are going to be called next week? We got a new president after all. I mean, you could get some Obama official that, that, that says something to create trouble, and then who knows what anybody means? It's all political. It's all just. The Republicans in Congress aren't even doing Republican things because they want to, we need more Republicans because they're trying to get a super majority to who knows what they really actually want to do with. So I don't, I don't buy, fine, I'm calling them healthy cigarettes because that's what I want to call them. It's not a claim. So now that, that, uh, <clears throat> that's out of the way, um, you see what my week has been like? What's at the top of this list? Let's hold up blank paper so it sounds like I'm reviewing a list of things to talk. Ah, yes. I finished this week, over the weekend, the first installment of printwrite.com. W-R-I-T-E. I mean, I'm a writer. And a writer is right by definition. And so, when I say print write, you automatically know how to spell right, right? I mean, 
Of course, I'm not going to say print R-I-G-H-T. It's going to be W-R-I-T-E. Of course. Because, yeah, because. So I finished the first installment of printwrite.net. It's awesome. You can go visit it. It's got all kinds of tools. It's, well, my my concept, see, being in Asia... I, I've I've talked to friends and go eat out at the restaurant and I've been a classroom teacher and I've had all kind I've, had, I've done Bible studies with people and I've had friends ask me to give them English tips and I've I've found some of the basic mistakes that people make both native English speakers as Americans I mean we 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 all have bad bad grammar I mean you know people we, people just learn us wrong and 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 so our our we we speak bad as opposed to speaking badly. And so I've put together a series of exercises. Just <sighs> see, I, I don't want to say what I'm going to say in the videos because videos for print, right? Are coming, but there it, it's just best sometimes to practice it, to just say the correct word pattern again and again and again and again and again. That way you just automatically get it right in your tests, in your papers and whatever. And so whether you're an American trying to improve your own English or you're a Westerner who a native English speaker trying to teach ESL in another country or you're in another country and English is your second language, this has just got a lot of really good, useful stuff. I even went through and edited Rudyard Kipling's Just So Stories. Uh, the N-word actually appeared in how the leopard got his spots. And I turned that into Negro because, you know, a hundred years ago, I suppose words might have meant things a little differently, maybe. But uh, also I took some of the partial words. He uses uh, misspelled slang to make a point, but that confuses Google Translate. And so second language, you know, people learning English as a second language are going to have trouble with that. So I went through and just did some very small, mild changes so that... Uh, so that Kipling would be useful. And I did that all weekend. I slept four hours on Friday night and Saturday night and uh, Sunday night. My goodness, I must have slept nine or ten hours making up for it. I woke up a little bit sick. But I got so much done. It's amazing how much time the simplest thing takes. Isn't it? Isn't it? It just... But I keep plugging away at it. I've had this project to get some really good, useful uh, English, English tutoring, English instruction tippage stuff up up and going for a long time. Like, I, I didn't want it to be ESL teaching because, you know, that Spanish class is different if you're in America or in Mexico. Because in the U.S., Spanish is a second language class. In Mexico, Spanish is going to be a native language class and they're totally different curriculums. Well, I wanted an English basis that, that spanned both of them. It's just useful insights, parents, homeschooling, students having trouble with their challenges. You know, I mean, you know, we all have trouble with English grammar and stuff at some point. So I've, I've got that done and I'm just really excited about it. And I've just been really working on it and I've been working, 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 working. And you know, this week I had a few people give me the hairy eyeball. What are you doing? Who do you think? And I, I just said, you know. You know what? I'm not going to worry about you. I'm just going to keep working. In fact, that kind of gets to my point. Working people mind their own business. If they get too distracted complaining about other people's problems, they make excess enemies and run a deficit of their own achievement. Survival requires getting work done. Getting work done takes time. Time requires focus, especially with all the distractions screaming for attention. Busybodies are not the threat they like to think of themselves as. When a busybody complains about you, don't worry. He's focusing on your challenges because he hasn't overcome enough of his own. Just keep working. Working people are formidable, both in daily challenges and when they are confronted by challengers. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.